Hi everyone, welcome to another day with learning <laughs> Vedic Sidereal Astrology with Sal. <laughs> if you are new, there are other videos that we have already uploaded recently, so make sure you always check the most recent videos that um, we upload daily, all right? So for today, um, we're going to be discussing the wonderful world of the Caracas of the houses. So let's begin. Now, first thing that I want everybody to understand when we discuss Caracas, we're talking about significator. Mm -hmm. Each houses in Vedic sidereal astrology has a planet that is the Caraca of that house. Now, let's start first with the first house. So the first house, which is this one, mm -hmm. let's put it here. Let's move that there. So the significator for the first house is going to be the sun. Oh, where did it go? Oh, there we go. The sun is there. So for the first house, the Karaka will be the sun. Now, you're going to ask why. Why would be, why are we going to use um, sun as the Karaka? Because as a person, okay, we want the, um, the native you to shine, right? You know, of course, it's going to be egoistic. But at the same time, sun is our natural atma, meaning our soul. So we want the person to have, okay, in their first house, this, uh, you know, this uh, wonderful energy of the sun because it gives the soul enlightenment. So we want that there. Mm -hmm. So that's why the sun is going to be the Karaka of the first house. So it's going to be very, very interesting later on once we dive deeper to each of the house. Because remember, the first house is the I. Uh, so that's for the first house. Now let's go to the next one, which is going to be the second house. Now you can raise your hand if you have any question and hopefully someone answers. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Okay. So second house, who can answer? Who can answer second house? First, let's identify what is the second house. Money. That's, you know, of course there's family, savings, you know. But let's just think of what planet. Okay. Oh, we're learning here, huh? What planet, come on, Cynthia, think. What planet that do you, do you want to put in the second house to have big money, big savings, big family? Do you want to put Mars? No. Do you want to put Venus? Maybe. How about we put the most benefic planet? Who can answer the most benefic? I'll give you a cookie. No, I eat all the cookies. <laughs> the most benefic planet, there you go, Jupiter. Perfect. Because if you put Jupiter in the second house, then you are using Jupiter's energy to make things big. Hence, Jupiter is the Karaka for the second house. Amazing. These are all my, my research. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> This is thousands of years. <laughs> this is from the Vedas. <laughs> Next, let's have okay, the third house. All right. Karaka for the third house. Ask yourself, what is the third house in the first place? Is it your siblings? Yes. But the third house is more of courage, right? Your mind. The ability to take action, third house. Of course, third house is school also. But what planet do you want to put here when you want to show courage, the driving force? Should we put Saturn? No. Should we put Venus? No, because then we just keep loving people. And, you know, and no, it does not add up. So what we want to put here is the planet we call... I'm hearing it from the back. Yes, you're right. Lunch break is coming. <laughs> Mars, exactly. 
we want Mars here because for us to have the will and the courage to manifest our dreams, let's put that planet in the third house. Mars. Love it. There's going to be a pop-up quiz after this, okay? So make sure you're putting the notes. Mm-hmm. Make sure. Mm. Next, we're going to have the fourth house. Mm. Fourth house. There is a price for the fourth house. What is the fourth house? Ask yourself, not your sitmate. Raise your hands. Fourth house is what? Conveyances. Okay, I hear you. Fourth house is what else? Resting place, yes, this is where we die. Well, our whole life, this is where we look at it. Mm -hmm. Fourth house is comfort, I hear you. Okay, so what do we want to put as far as a comfort? A planet that keeps giving, that does not really, uh, you, know, uh, you know, keeps giving unconditional would be what? Here we go. Mm. The Karaka for the fourth house is the moon. Mm-hmm. Because the moon can give us comfort. It's very soothing. Since when did you look at the moon and then you get aggressive? Not unless you're a werewolf. That's a different topic. That's for the next classroom. Mm -hmm. Werewolves 101. Okay. <laughs> you can go there. Okay. So the moon is the planet that gives us that energy. Right? You just want to adore and give love when you, see, when you see the moon. Very, very dreamy. Right? So that's why the moon is for the fourth house. It gives us comfort. It's a good significator. It's a karaka for giving comfort. Love it? Next we're going to have is the fifth house. Okay. So the fifth house. Ooh, this is very spicy house. Who can give what is what are the things involved in the fifth house? Yes, no. Romantic connection, yes. Dating, yes. Mm -hmm. What else? Of course, I'm hearing you. Yes, you can use this for business. This is a speculation house, I understand. But more, more than out of all those things that you guys were giving, fifth house is progeny. Mm. This is where you give birth to those little creatures, <laughs> which we call babies. Mm. And those are what? Blessings. Yes. So what planet should we put there? Mars, right? So we raise these babies who are unruly and aggressive. No, we can't do that. But since it's a blessing from God, then which planet is closely or is actually God? The most benefic. Which one? Who is the most benefic planet? Not Venus. The one and only Jupiter. Mm, yes. Because we want the birth of these kids to grow, right? You want this uh, learning also. Fifth house is learning, creativity. This is where we find our happiness also. So you want all those things to get big. Because if you put here Saturn, then you'll never be happy, right? <laughs> then your happiness and trying to do what you want, it's now being controlled instead of being expanded. Let's thank Jupiter, right? Mm. Very positive. Next, let's go for the sixth house. Now, this house is very challenged, very, very challenged, folks. Let's not get aggressive. I know this is not anybody's favorite because it's the house of illness, health, yes, debts, ugh, enemies. Ugh. It, just, it just keeps digging itself. Nine to five is the sixth house. The mundane, who wants to do the mundane? There is one planet, the general. Yes, it's called the general planet. The, the one that likes to obey and just keeps going and going, which means Mars will be the best Karaka for this. Since Mars never runs out of energy 
then we want this in the health house. We want Mars in the house where it can show its drive, its resiliency. There you go. That's Mars. Next we're going to have is lunch break. <laughs> what are we having at the canteen? Can you call the other teacher, please? Okay. Ask them if we're all going to have a coffee break. <laughs> Let's see now. Ooh, seventh house. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves this house. There's only two houses I think that everyone wants to know. Is one and seven. <laughs> the I and the one who's I'm going to marry. So if, okay, there's an if here. Um, but there's only one planet. But we'll take two. Okay. But there's only one. Okay. The planet that is the Karaka for marriage, partnership, and contract. Seventh house. So who is going to be in charge for this? There's only one planet and everybody's waiting for her entrance. The one and only Venus. Exactly. Of course, the diva itself. The one who wants to, uh, to have a partner is Venus. But of course, it depends if you are, if you're masculine, then Jupiter, uh, if, um, you know, Jupiter can also be the Karaka for the seven. But let's not complicate life right now. Let's just accept that Venus first, okay? Because it rules the seventh house also. So Venus is the one in charge when we talk about Caracas for the seven. We're moving fast with the eighth house. Who knows what eighth house is? Nobody. That's the thing, because the eighth house is very secretive and mysterious. Eighth house houses the occult, hidden knowledge and wisdom. But that's not what the Karaka for this one is. Think of other things that you can think about eighth house. Yes, taboo, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Other things that is a significant of eighth house. Yes, research is eighth house. Mm -hmm. Um, subconscious mind is 8th house. Yes. There's one thing that you guys are forgetting. It's called longevity. Yes. Now, who wants here to have a long life? Raise your hands, legs, limbs, tails, and horns. <laughs> oh, we have someone with horns. From what planet are you, sir? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. You're a native to this planet. Okay. <laughs> longevity is going to be held by the one and only Saturn. Because Saturn is basically slows things time, right? So who wants to have a long life? Then let's put Saturn there. Mm -hmm. Because eighth house is death and sudden changes. So if you put Saturn here, then that thing, I mean, that, I mean the energy of Saturn manifests well in this house. Yes, you're right. Mr. Horn. <laughs> You're going to have a, lo a lot of different classmates here. Okay. I hope I'm in the... Am I in the star section? No. Oh, okay. So this is not the star section. I thought it was. As always, I am at the classes where... Are, the, are you guys all transferees? Okay. Transferees. Mm -hmm. We should have an activity of getting to know each other. Okay. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm the representative of all zodiacs. <laughs> Next is the 10th house. We're warming up. Everybody loves this house also, especially if you are an entrepreneur. Someone who likes to talk to, um, deal with other people also is this. 10th house. Society. We've missed one planet and we haven't used this planet. Mm -hmm. The planet that... Um, can show its uh, how to call it? its benefic by having its duality, because <laughs> you need that when you're talking about business. In society, you have to show a little bit two of your sides. Mm -hmm. So which planet is that? The one and only makes it feel like it's so young. Mercury. Okay, there you go. The Karaka for the tenth house. Mercury is good for merch, merchandise, and 10th house is entrepreneur. So Mercury can manage this house, can show and gives its blessing in the 10th house. Amazing. Love Mercury. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love Mercury. Technology also, right? Oh, I, mm. We're getting closer to the 12th house. Make sure you got your, your notes ready. I'll give you guys five minutes to review. And then we're going to review Dasha's. That's the pop-up quiz. <laughs> okay. So now we are at the 11th house. Another money house. Earnings. Networks. Yes, that's the 11th. Mm -hmm. So who won? Who, who, who wants to take this one? We know the answer already. When we want things to grow big, such as our income and earnings, friends, networks, and materialization of our dreams and desire. There's only one planet. It's called Captain Planet. <laughs> Jupiter. Captain Planet. You want Jupiter there in the 11th house, of course, right? Who, which person ever has said, I don't want my dreams to grow big? No. The bigger your dream is, the better, because you're thinking of everyone, which is 11th house, your network, your friends. So good indicator again. And the last one is the 12th house. Mm -hmm. Let's pick that up. 12th house, here we go. Now, 12th house, should we call this a spiritual house? Yes. It is known for its liberation. Yes. It's also the, the last part of the zodiac, which is it rules by the feet. Hmm. But 12th house, there's one significant thing with it. This is a very, um, it's a house where you lose everything. You cannot take anything anymore after this. It's also enemies and hid, like hidden enemies. Six houses enemies and the 12 is where they hide. Okay. <laughs> now, who do you want to be placed here as a Karaka so that those things can be controlled? Because you don't want a lot of hidden enemies, right? You do not want a lot of losses. So let's put here the only planet that can guarantee that those things are in control, Saturn. Amazing. Each planet has a function. Each planet has a blessing that it can give to different houses. The main theme of each planet is very basic. It just gets complicated the more you dive deeper into it. But astrology is very simple. It's just easy as this, easy as pie. We don't need to make it complicated. Mm -hmm. That's why now when you download the app and then you check where the planets are, you will see how the planets is giving you a blessing. Isn't that interesting? So go ahead, download the app, check your birth chart, and then watch how magical it is. So this is another day, another class with Sal. I will see you guys again and make sure that horn guy, our classman over there, make sure you bring him to lunch. Okay. I'll see you guys again. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye guys.